The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and markets off to races to the downside yet again. We check out the S&Ps right now. You're talking about a number down 29 points on some hot inflationary data producer price index, PPI. I'll get it out. Why don't we just jump right over to it, folks, because you're talking about a number. Let me pull up the headline here. You're talking about a number of 9.6% in November from a year ago, almost a 10% rise in the PPI. Now, the CPI data is more important to the Federal Reserve. That's the number that they prefer uh, for what consumers are paying. But man, you cannot deny wholesale prices increased at their quickest pace ever. We're not going back to 1969. We're not going back to 1982. We're going back ever, folks. Wholesale prices in November, the latest sign inflation pressures, uh, bedeviling is how CNBC puts it, quite the word there. Uh, the economy are still present. The Labor Department reported. You're talking about 0.8% in November. The expectation was for about 0.5%, excluding food and energy. Still quite a broad increase. You're talking about 0.7% for the month. Core PPI, 6.9%. Also the largest gain on record. Remarkable, you have a number of 6.9% when you take out energy, which we all know crude has been rising dramatically. Food, rising dramatically as well. You take those two out, you still got almost a 7% pop on a yearly basis. You have a 0.7% pop on only a monthly basis. Uh, estimates? were for respective gains of 0.4% and 7.2%, meaning the monthly gain was faster than estimates, but the year-over-the-year -year measure was a bit slower. Not sure how that plays out. How do you overstate on the monthly number and miss on the yearly number? Uh, nonetheless, that's how they line up. Demand for goods continued to be the biggest driver of producer prices, rising 1.2% for the month. Market was looking... Uh, excuse me, no, 1.3% for October. Final demand services inflation ran at a 0.7% monthly rate, much faster than the 0.2% October rate, a sign that the service services side could be catching up in prices after lagging through much of the recovery. Uh, that number out at 830, folks, and man, we just drop just like that. And look at the acceleration we had, whether it was where we were at about 3 a.m., the market sold off, and then that 830 number for the PPI, we're sitting at about 46.50. We're now sitting at 46.30. NASDAQ 100 trading lower as well. I mean, you don't have to go far back, folks. We're 500 points below where we were at 24 hours ago in the NASDAQ 100. For some context on the S&Ps, you were sitting right near record territory coming into the week at 47.14. So much for that idea, folks. You give up 85 points in the S&Ps just like that. I was talking about it during my show yesterday. I was talking about what are the possibilities of risk to the downside coming into a week like we have right now versus the possibilities to the upside coming into the week like we have right now. Uh, you were waiting for PPI data this morning. The main event is waiting for the Federal Reserve decision tomorrow. Their meeting starting today. You come into that meeting within literally 17 points of all-time highs on the S&P. I think we have a high print of 47.40. We were trading at 47.23 overnight. We were trading above 47.20 as recently as 6.30 in the morning yesterday. Things really started to escalate, though. Yesterday, you have a sell-off going from about 9 o'clock, really 8.30. The sell-off began, accelerated on the open, accelerated into the close. We accelerated when Europe opened this morning. We accelerated on the PPI data. Be careful out there, folks, because uh, have your spikes up in a big way. Now, I'll pull up the chart that I've been looking at continually on the S&P, right? You take a look at the weekly, pretty well-defined channel line that this S&P has been in for the better part of almost a year and a half, which is remarkable when you put it that way. You back it up to the daily to see where we're at right now. We were sitting at, as I said, 47.23 yesterday, and just like that, we're at 46.26. You make a dive to the lower end of this range, uh, we're pretty close to that area because you're talking about only 45.80 maybe 
Uh, yes, 4580 or so. So you're about 50 points away from the lower boundary line of this channel line that the S&P has been in. And doesn't mean you can't get a little bit below it, folks. When I'm talking about channel lines, I like to use a form of almost like a linear regression where you might allow it to go a little bit outside of it. Sometimes it might not touch it exactly. Of course, it's always great when it lines up perfectly to the channel line. But basically, uh, as long as it's forming a little bit of a linear regression is how I like to look at things. I'm backing up on the five-year daily to zoom in on the action. And you can see, yes, we've gotten above it. We've gotten above it. We've gotten above it occasionally. We've gotten below it occasionally a couple times. But nonetheless, we're coming down to that lower portion of that line on an all-important week, uh, to say the least. I assume the Fed, Chairman Powell, he's digesting that number this morning. All signs pointing to inflation through the roof. And uh, Chairman Powell does not want to be known as the Federal Reserve Chairman that let inflation, inflation roar its head out of control. That is, that's like a nightmare scenario for a Fed Chairman or a Chairwoman, I imagine. I mean, their whole job is that balancing act, folks, and he's done it very well. We're going to be talking to our man Kevin Hicks coming up after the break. If you've been listening to our interviews, he is a big fan of Chairman Powell, rightfully so, for what he's been doing. But, boy, he's got a task ahead of himself, folks, this week, especially with the numbers lining up. You got CPI data out last week, talking about 6.8%. We got PPI data out this week, talking about almost 10%. Jumping around to commodities, we got crude right now. Back to a 15-minute chart to see the action. We got crude trading to 70.38 this morning. We got gold diving down $20 on that number. Quite a pullback for gold, actually below Friday's number on gold. We're trading at 1767 this morning. You got silver trading lower, as you'd expect as well, down 56 pennies. Also, just below where we were on Friday in silver. And we jumped in notes and bonds, and we got uh, lower action, lower price, higher yield there on the 10-year, kind of reversing the action we had yesterday. Quite the acceleration yesterday, man. You do not see this type of move, folks. We almost had a full point to the upside from where we were Sunday night. 130.07, we spike at 130.30, uh, and just like that, we give back some of that. We're trading at 130.20 right now in the 10-year, and as you expect, we jump over to the volatility index, seeing some action this morning. We got 17 minutes to go until the opening bell, and we got a VIX approaching 22 so far this morning. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Uh... Why not kick it off with our man, Elon Musk? Elon Musk, named Time's Man of the Year. Don't agree with that one at all, folks. He is a dynamic, dynamic man in many ways. Um, but I'm not sure he deserved Time's Man of the Year going back. There's a lot going on in the year 2021 to hand that out to Mr. Elon Musk. But Time's going to get the clicks. And unfortunately, that's what they're playing, in my opinion. But named Man of the Year. Nonetheless, he sells more shares. Tesla's down 30 bucks with the market this morning, trading at 937. Uh, but Tesla, they're going to start accepting Dogecoin as payment for some products, Tesla says. Uh, some merchandise in the latest in a series of tweets supporting the cryptocurrency. You have Doge popping this morning. We'll get back to that in a moment. Some of Tesla's quote unquote merch would be buyable with the digital coin. What about their cars, Elon? Uh, with products including the $150 Giga Texas belt buckle featuring the car maker's logo, uh, $50 cyber whistle. Uh, it's amazing that they sell this stuff uh, out to their fanboys and fangirls. Now, to pull up Doge. Buyer beware, folks, on this one. We'll say that. There's your pop on Doge from 15 pennies up to 21. We've already given it back to 19. But, folks, there's your there's your rise and fall of Dogecoin. We'll talk a little bit about that later in the show. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back with our man Kevin Hicks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative by 31 points. The NASDAQ 100, negative by 183. Dow off 106. And the Russell right now, off about 13 points. Let's jump over to some of the FANG stocks. Apple creeping ever so close to the $3 trillion mark. And just like that, you shave like $8 off the price of this equity. Now, folks, $8 in Apple. Boy, I got to do some quick math. I should have done it uh, prior to coming on after the break. But you're talking about 16 billion shares outstanding, folks. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. You're talking about $128 billion shaved off the market cap of Apple. Uh, you're down about a buck right now, but Apple holding up pretty well. Just back to Friday prices so far in this market. All right, folks, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Tom White, Kevin Hinks, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups, talking about options, talking about defined risk. Kevin Hinks, we got some inflationary data possibly this morning, and the market is reacting. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, uh, you know, some, here's the thing, though, Tommy. I think your viewers need to understand from a trading perspective what the PPI data means. And... The fact that it is an inflationary measurement, but in terms of the four that we get in a month, which is the wages data, right, and non-farm payrolls, CPI data, then the PCE component of income and outlays, and then there's the PPI. PPI is a distant fourth in terms of measuring inflation. Why? Because those numbers don't always hit the consumer like the other three do. Right. So even though this is a data that the market reacted to because it's pretty high profile right now and at the top of everyone's tongue, I wouldn't expect the market to overreact to this. Now, you look at the market, what it's doing. No, I think the market got jittery yesterday morning on the open when they started to realize that there's a two day Fed meeting coming up today and Wednesday. And Jerome Powell's comments there, I believe, have this market jittery. I'm not, not sure that uh, PPI is something that I would overreact to, Tommy. I'm sorry. I love how you break PPI. it down, Kevin. I've heard you talk about those four before. That's why I have it in my mind, folks. That's why you should be listening to Fast Market at 12 o'clock every trading day on the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. Uh, I was talking about on my program yesterday, Kevin, 
Uh, kind of what you're talking about, really, just saying, you know, it's interesting. We're coming into a Fed week that on the heels of, of course, the CPI data on Friday, but coming into a Fed week, basically at all time highs near the open yesterday, we were within about 17 points on the S&P futures of all time highs. And I was talking to the viewers and saying, folks, what is the probability? And this is as a trader, I was looking at it, Kevin, saying, what's the probability that the Fed could say something that would boost this market 200 points above the all-time highs, or it could potentially say something that might give a little bit of pause, even in a strong market, um, to the downside. Now, that's my personal bias, you know, but when you're sitting at all-time highs and all the discussion, Kevin, is about are they going to go faster than they thought, right? Is inflation faster than they thought? Uh, this is the first meeting since Chairman Powell has acknowledged that the word transitory might not be an appropriate word going forward, which is a pretty strong statement. So all that combined, I kind of said, you know, this is kind of uh, interesting. And interesting is an interesting word, but interesting that we're coming into that all-time highs and the market says, yeah, you know what, maybe we want a little bit of room to the downside with the possibility of that taper. But man, you look at this chart, Kevin, and we're sitting still about 100 points, 115 points away from all-time highs in the S&Ps. Uh, we have commodities, of course, rocking today, Kevin, on some of that number. Crude's down a buck. You got gold down about $20. I was listening to your program yesterday. Pretty light on the earnings as we wrap up the season, but we got a couple uh, going on this week. I'm sure you guys may be touching on the market action and the general fundamental news, but what are you going to be talking about coming up on the show, coming up at 12 today, Kevin? Today we have a theme, right? We're, we're, we're very thin on earnings, as you know, this week, Tommy, in terms of high-profile earnings. So this starts our themes program. And what better time to talk about big-box retailers than uh, about, what is it, 10 days before Christmas, 11 days before Crazy. Christmas. So we'll do Amazon, Target, and Walmart today, Tommy. Nice. And we talk about a, a big three, man. And it is, it is interesting, Kevin, how all three of these have traded so differently this past year, man. Uh, Amazon been in quite a consolidation for a while. Walmart has had its ups and downs. Target has just yep. been on a tear. Now, giving back some of those gains. Um, but all three of them, as you say, man, we're still I'm still doing some holiday shopping, man. I got to get on it. Like you said, we got 11 days till Christmas, folks. Uh, amazing. I'm going to jump real quick, Kevin, to notes and bonds, if I could. And I just want to get your take, because it was interesting yesterday, Kevin, the, the move we got. I mean, you almost got like 20 ticks almost from where we were early in the morning at 130.10, you could say, in the 10-year. This thing traded up hard in terms of higher price and lower yield yesterday. Uh, what's your take on that 10-year? We're pulling back a little bit this morning, but it was interesting to see that action. You had the market selling off a little bit, and you had the 10-year, so you have, you have actually – you know, a lowering yield yesterday, Kevin, coming into yep. a Fed meeting where they may actually accelerate the tapering. What's your, what's your take on that action? Tommy, I would say it's a million-dollar question, but we really have to adjust our <laughs> metrics now. It's the trillion-dollar question. I'm Why, giving you all the big ones, Kevin. Let's go. With everything we see in terms of inflation and everything we know that Jerome Powell's about to mention, why are yields grinding lower? Now, they're higher this morning, but in, in, in general – They've ground lower. Even the last three days, three, four yeah. days, trading days, they've ground lower. And that's a tricky one. You know, it makes you look at what is the 10-year German Bund doing right, right now. Our co economy might be healthy, but that doesn't mean the rest of the world is healthy. And there are relationships in trading these bonds. So, yeah, it's kind of a head-scratcher that our yields remain lower when everything we have going in the future. So, yeah, it's, it's certainly... There's always something in the market that makes you scratch your head. That's certainly one of them right now, Tommy. I'm glad I'm not the only one sitting here scratching my head, man, because I was doing it yesterday, and uh, it's just so cool right now. We've talked about it many times, how many variables are in play in the market, how much volatility, and how much kind of is up in the air um, as we go forward in the future. And really interesting, when you come in end of the year, we got a Fed meeting coming up today. It starts tomorrow. They got their decision. We have an ECB decision, right? We have a Bank of England coming out with their numbers on Thursday as well. Uh, and all of that, we got end of the year, and the market's just been through the roof. Is there any tax selling? You know, that's that's kind of almost last in place right now with everything else going on. But it's something to consider, man, as we come into, like you said, 11 days until Christmas. Well, Kevin, we'll be watching the show today, man. We look forward to the segment you guys will be doing on those big box retailers. And, uh, yeah, if you haven't done that Christmas shopping yet, folks, get out there. We got 11 days left to go until Christmas. Kevin, we appreciate the update as always, man. We'll be watching at 12 noon today. I appreciate having me on, Tommy. Thank you. My pleasure as always. Have a great one, man. We'll be watching. Folks, tune in 12 noon today. You heard them. They're going to be talking about Amazon, 
Target, Walmart. Uh, really interesting. Now, Amazon, I've been a huge bull for a while. Long term, folks, outstanding company. I don't have to tell you. Uh, but they've been in quite the consolidation here. You go back to June, right? You're talking about between about 3,000 and 3,500. You first got above that area in July when Jazzy took over as CEO, got above that area again in November before this recent pullback. You're kind of back in that consolidation. Now, Walmart, we have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. Uh, you could call it some type of a consolidation. I mean, you're sitting basically at prices that we were trading at over a year ago in Walmart in August of 2020. And Target, not much the same there. Target trading at 234. Yes, you've had a double top here at 268. But boy, you back it up to where we were last August for some correlation to Walmart. And yeah, Target was trading at 156 at that price. You're trading at 234. All right, folks, stay tuned. Should be an interesting open. S&P is negative by 33. We'll be right back with that opening bell. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps down about 30 points right now. NASDAQ 100 down 193. All the moves pretty large when you look at where we were yesterday. We got, I mean, how many sell-offs you got there, folks? This is the fourth sell-off we've had from yesterday morning. You had one right out of the gate. You had one at the closing. You had one when Europe opened overnight. And then, man, we got one going on since about 8.30 this morning. And you're going to be at lows that we have not seen, basically, as you see the NASDAQ 100 dropping right now. You got the S&Ps dropping as well, down about 35 
75 points, all the markets at session lows. The Dow catching a little bit of a bid, so I shouldn't say all the markets, as the Dow negative by just two tenths percent right now. Russell negative by eight tenths percent. NASDAQ 100 negative by 1.2 percent. So those tech stocks, watch out, and the S&P negative by about seven tenths percent. I talked about Apple. Let's jump over to Apple. Apple shares a little bit of a lift, actually flat right now on the open. We'll call it up one tenth percent. We jump over to Amazon shares down one percent right now at 33.57. We jump to Microsoft. Microsoft had some volatility yesterday, man. You're talking about ten dollars off the highs we had yesterday right now. You're negative by five dollars and seventy one cents down one point seven percent from Microsoft shares this morning. Google shares. Look at that drop off off one point two percent as well. We jump over to Tesla negative 2.5 percent that's even with a little bit of a pop on the open for tesla shares and so i started to talk about this uh in terms of where we were now doge okay so elon puts out it must be pretty empowering to be the richest man in the world and know that you can just move markets with one tweet i mean do you think elon owns some dogecoin when he tweets out there that they're going to start accepting it um i would say he might folks uh, so here is your chart of Doge, though, for some context, okay? And here is the little blip that Dogecoin has just gone up because they may be accepting it for some merch. If he was really real about this, I imagine they would start accepting it for all their cars. Not sure why they're just going to take it for a $150 whatever Tesla item if they aren't going to take it for vehicles. Uh, maybe Elon's a little skeptical of even doing that, but just buyer beware, folks, even trying to, you know, catch a falling knife here you're up to 70 cents you're sitting right now at 19 cents before this run started you were at six pennies you back things up to uh we're january of this year and you're at less than a penny okay now you put this thing on a shorter term time frame yes that looks like quite a pop folks but i bring up the longer term time frame be aware of dogecoin it has no functional use whatsoever whatsoever it's, uh, it's kind of unfortunate that you have the richest man in the world with the podium and the, the power he has to speak, and he's out there playing games with something like Dogecoin, because, yes, he, he might want to be empowering uh, crypto, but doing it in Dogecoin just seems um, a disservice to his followers when it is such a joke of a cryptocurrency, and that's the little I know. Now, you want to talk about uh, buyer beware. So I'm, I'm learning all sorts of stuff this morning about non-fungible tokens. So the Board Ape Yacht Club. So these are non-fungible tokens, Board Apes. All right, they're all a little bit different. They got pushed out. Um, now, these have been going for $250,000. Okay, I don't know how they're going for a quarter million bucks, but that's, I guess, the market for these things. Uh, and what happens is that somebody puts it up for sale. He tries to put it up for sale for 75 Ether accidentally lists it for 0 0.75 ether it sells immediately for about three thousand dollars now what's interesting here is that the buyer paid an extra thirty four thousand dollars okay to speed up their transaction ensuring no one could snap it up before then they realized it was like basically a finger uh typo in 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 crypto world folks there's no calling the bank and saying i made a finger fat finger typo uh and it's even bigger than that, that they got bots all over. So the transaction appears to have been done by a bot, which can be coded to immediately buy an NFT listed below a certain price on behalf of the owner. So everything was coded, it looks like, to say if any of these popped up under a certain price level because of where the market was. And that's what happened, folks. So instead of pushing out at 75 Ether, they push it out at 0.75 Ether. And uh, the bot sent a transaction with over eight ether of gas fees. So it was instantly sniped before they could click cancel. And just like that, 250K gone. It's the wild, wild west over there, folks. And that's just all stuff that's done legally, let alone all the, the buyer beware you got to talk about with fraud going on in that sector. Um, pretty remarkable. I'm not, I still haven't made sense of this one, folks. You know, non fungible tokens, they will be around in some capacity. But two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or three hundred grand for a picture of a bored ape uh, that you can use as your Twitter profile. It supposedly gets you into some functions or something like that. Doesn't quite make sense to me just yet, folks. Um, we'll see how that plays out. Not to be an old man spewing knowledge, but doesn't quite make sense to me there. Uh, yes, in some degree, some of those can make sense if you have some type of a digital item that is just one of a kind. I guess it makes sense to that degree. But, folks, the whole point is you buy a beautiful painting, right? There's only one 
Van Gogh or something like that that exists that you go see it in a beautiful museum. You can't mimic that anywhere else. You buy one of these NFTs, guess what? It's going to look exactly like that whether you own it or not because it's a digital picture. So I don't know. Buyer beware in a big way on those NFTs. And you're just seeing what can happen out there. And there are so many bright people out there. I mean, imagine the person that coded that in. All they do is they have a computer running with a code. They see it on the market. They buy it up. And just like that, you're gone. Now, the Board 8 Club is one of the most prestigious NFT collections in the world. You may scoff at the words prestigious and NFT being used so close together. But it's among, among its star-studded members. How about Jimmy Fallon, Steph Curry, and Post Malone? I'm finding new stuff out all, all day. Uh, so I guess you get one of these and then you gain access to certain things or, or so forth. Um, and they all have slightly different variations. You can see the pictures in there and how many ether they're going for. All these prices are somewhere around, what, 231, 218. And you can see the one they listed here for $3,100. And just like that, someone snagged it up instantly. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump down the line for some of the stocks that are actually making moves today. Not too much in terms of earnings, but they got the meme stocks rocking again. GameStop, uh, let's jump over to these stocks. And the market catching a little bit of a bit off the lows there, which is nice. GameStop, I was going to say up, but yeah, you're just up off the lows where you open. Actually flat on the session after falling most of this week. AMC shares catching a little bit of a lift, but still down about 3.3% so far this morning. Beyond Meat, they're up higher. Yeah, they got an upgrade, right? Yeah, to neutral from underweight, saying nationwide launch at McDonald's could happen within less than three months. So Beyond, huh? They're going to be pushing out at Mickey D's. Beyond up a bit, up 5%. You were up more overnight. Looks like you gave it back with the market, but popping a bit. For some context in this stock, though, folks, I always say context is so important in life, in conversations, in many things. Uh, you look at the short-term time frame of this stock, you say, yeah, maybe it's catching a bid. You might be right. You look at the longer-term time frame of this, and hey, maybe it is catching a bid. Maybe this made it down to this low that we had back in March. Maybe that's the area for Beyond Meat. You're up 6.3% today. Buyer beware, though. You were at 200 bucks earlier this year. You were at 160 bucks as recently back almost at the beginning of July on this equity. Right now, you're trading up 6%, but still at 67.27 in Beyond Meat. Look at these markets. Can't hold a good market down. Dow up six points, actually, in the positive after being down almost 200 near the open. You got the S&Ps negative by just 22 points right now. The Russell negative by five. Let's check over to commodities. Gold still down almost 20 bucks, down 17 bucks at 1770 this morning. And we jump to notes and bonds. A little bit lower price right now. You're talking about a yield of 1.46%, the yield on that 10-year. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back, see what else we have for equities moving so far this morning on Tuesday Action. We get the S&Ps negative by 22. I'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. In the world of bankers, uh, they are addressing the inflation, folks, by bumping wages in terms of maybe a 40 or even a 50 percent bump to the bonus pool. Uh, Goldman and J.P. Morgan plan bumper bonuses to get the edge. Uh, interesting. Fixed income traders revenue has slumped, but two of Wall Street investment banking titans dominating this year's deal making friends are opening up their wallets to try and keep their bankers happy and ratcheting up pressure on rivals to follow suit. This is how inflation roars folks all right it's pervasive everywhere up and down the line in my opinion goldman sachs may boost its bonus pool for investment banking by about 50 percent jp morgan may reach for a 40 percent increase according to people with knowledge of their initial deliberations the business which covers merger and acquisitions advisory as well as underwriting groups is poised for the biggest windfalls after recent meetings to set pay for the year uh that's of course according to people not uh who don't want to be identified Bosses are under mounting pressure to be more generous after tempering raises at the end of 2020 amid concerns that a surge in business set set off by the pandemic might not last. That's not the case. Quite a year for bankers in 2021. Uh, now with signs pointing to yet another robust year ahead, senior execs are facing workers who in many cases feel that they're owed and ready to jump to competitors if their employers skimp. Don't be skimping if you want to pay for human capital, folks. Uh, you're seeing the wage pressures when they come out for non-farm payrolls. Now, the bottom of the wage pressures in terms of the lowest income earners, you've seen a dramatic rise. But here's your – it's up and down the line, folks, across the board because, number one, human capital is one of the most important things that you can invest in. And this labor market is pretty tight here, and you're seeing it in some of the best sectors out there in terms of the banking sector, quite a number when you look at it. At Goldman, the banking group posted a 63% jump in revenue of 2021's first nine months from the same period last year. Now, the first nine months of 2020 might not be a fair comparison, uh, but nonetheless, big numbers. JP Morgan's investment bank, the jump in fees was 42% for the first nine months. In the fourth quarter, investment banking fees will probably surge 35% from a year earlier. I mean, if you're working in those areas of that business and you're seeing this company plow through billions of dollars, uh, you better believe that you're going to think that you deserve some of that. That would make the period one of the best ever for the firm's bankers. And still, the pipeline looks quite strong. It's in next year across mergers and acquisitions, debt and equity. Uh, yeah, executives have been discussing increasing the pool by 30 or even 40 percent. Both firms have surged ahead of third place Morgan Stanley and pocketing fees from clients this year. Goldman, yeah, you talk about billions, $11 billion. And J.P. Morgan, $10 billion by the end of September. Uh, Morgan Stanley, not too shabby. Third place by a distant, but you're still talking about $8 billion. You add them up, that's $30 billion in nine months these companies are doing. Uh, yeah, nonetheless, you get the point. 
Uh, this year, fixed income traders, seen as one of the last remaining bastions of risk taking at U.S. banks, will probably see bonuses stagnate as their business slumps from last year's lucrative trading environment. Remember last year when fixed income and those banks was just crushing it? The fixed income revenue just just out of the out of the park for some of those banks. Not so much the case this year, and you may see the bonuses reflect that. All right, this market is just amazing, folks. We're going to have to get our man Kevin Hanks back on the line for another interview. No, I kid. Uh, but yeah, so much for an overreaction, it looks like, to the PPI data, as even the S&P gets it all back from where we were right at 830. You're back trading at 4646 right now, a quick 20-point pop in the S&Ps. The NASDAQ get basically right back to 830 as well. The Dow positive by 54 points right now, and the Russell even getting it back. Uh, the Russell right now, we'll call it flat, at 2175. Bitcoin up 735 bucks this morning. The one that's not coming back is gold right now tough go around for gold you're sitting in down about 17 bucks right at the lows we had a friday of 1771 and we jumped to notes and bonds uh yeah no real recoil there which is interesting now you're talking about a yield of 1.46 percent on the 10-year as we come into a fed decision tomorrow folks that's going to be an interesting one to say the least all right what else we have going on Speaking of action, folks, we got a TFNN holiday tiger sale going on. If you're not familiar, folks, we do about a couple of these a year. Last one we did, I think, was in June or July. Uh, next one we probably do might be in June or July, maybe the summer of next year. Maybe we have a July 4th holiday sale there. Uh, but we do a max a couple of them a year. You can get up to a 40% bonus on your purchase. Now, you click on the front page TFNN. You'll see the holiday sale there. This runs through next Thursday, folks. You're talking about what do we got? We got nine days, nine days. Yeah, we got nine days till the 23rd, man. We got nine days until basically Christmas, folks. Uh, you don't want to be shopping on Christmas Eve this year. <coughs> Talk about maybe some stores being out of products. So this runs through next Thursday. We'll close it out on the 23rd. We'll be closed on Friday, December 24th with the markets. There's three options for purchase for Tiger Dollars. Normally, you get a 10 15 and a 20% bonus. We've doubled all those bonuses, folks. You can get a 20% bonus. You spend 500. You get an additional 100 free Tiger Dollars, up to 600 Tiger Dollars. There's your 20% bonus. You spend 1,000. You get 1,300 Tiger Dollars. So you get a $300 bonus, a 30% bonus, or you spend 1,500. You get 600 free Tiger Dollars, up to 2,100. That's a 40% bonus on your purchase. Tiger Dollars never expire, folks. They can be good for any use for any newsletter service webinar that we offer at tfnn if you're thinking about signing up for a service if you're already a subscriber folks i encourage you please if you're already a subscriber think about this because i always look at the subscriptions and i'm more surprised that more people don't use tiger dollars they're a great deal folks you pay for it you apply it to your account once they get used for all forward transactions going forward a great way to lock in some savings on those subscriptions going forward and this will run through the next nine days tfnn holiday sale lock in those tiger dollars uh and then you'll have those tiger dollars to use for that next year or however you choose okay what else we got going on let's jump around to where are we going to jump to next yeah starbucks this one's interesting so starbucks they got one store that's unionized in buffalo now, my good old hometown of Boston, uh, you got two Starbucks cafes in Boston filing for union elections on Monday. Last week, employees at one Buffalo cafe voted to form the first union for baristas who work at a company owned location. Boston Starbucks is third U.S. market this year to seek a union election. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out um, for some of these companies. Amazon been battling those unions as well. We got Starbucks down with the market right now, down about half a percent. You take a look on the weekly. Pretty holding up pretty well. A uh, little bit of a consolidation, you could say, basically going back to April. Well, you've been chopping around between about 110 and 116 on Starbucks numbers. Now, I want to get to. Yeah, so they're out with their numbers January 25th. What is out later this week is FedEx. They're out with their numbers on Thursday. Now, FedEx. A little bit of volatility for FedEx in a big way here, man. You're down to 251 right now. You're actually positive right now at the market. You were up to 319 earlier this year. You trade all the way down to a low of about 215. You're trading at 241. When we look at FedEx, you're talking about a $14 move for their earnings on Thursday. Whoops. I wanted to get to the analyze, add the simulated trades. Now, what I want to look at here is that FedEx for the week 
okay? You want action, about a $15 move on this equity for the weekly options through Friday. That's doing some decent action, but probably right in line to where I'd peg this thing in terms of the volatility it may have. One of the final stocks remaining for earnings season, FedEx out with their numbers on Thursday. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming right back to finish up the show. I'll be right back in three minutes. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We'll get the S&Ps right now, negative by 16 points, trading at 46.42. Taking a look at this chart right now, you see the action. Where are we? Come on. Catch up to it. There we go. Uh, we do sell off on that PPI data. You catch a bid on the open. And then just like that, though, you've got a volatility in both directions. So we've given up almost 10 points in the last 10 minutes or so in the S&Ps, trading at 46.41 right now. We jump over to the VIX, volatility index. Trading at 21.73, up about 7%, up a buck 42. Be interesting to see where we go ahead of tomorrow's action. I imagine the market, no matter what we do today, tomorrow's action going to calm a bit ahead of the Federal Reserve coming up with their announcement at 2 p.m. press conference, 2.30 p.m. to follow. I and mean, one of the more important press conferences for the Fed to date, as I said to our man Kevin Hinks this morning, it's the first time that Chairman Powell will be speaking in the chair as a regular meeting is going on since he addressed the fact that transitory is not an appropriate word going forward. It's quite a balancing act he has, folks, in terms of not freaking the market out that he's going to go too fast with the tapering. 
Yet, meanwhile, not freaking the market out that he's going to let inflation get out of control. It's quite a balancing act. The numbers that are coming out are making it even more difficult for him. So we'll see how he does tomorrow. NASDAQ 100 down 155. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks as we wrap up the program. Apple shares basically flat at 175. Apple now $8 away from that $3 trillion mark. We jump to Microsoft shares. Woo! Watch out there, Microsoft down 2.6%. What's going on with Microsoft? There's a little bit of a pullback. Now, here's the only thing I'll say, folks. If you think this is a pullback, this is just a daily chart going back a year. And I got 211 on this chart right now for this calendar year. Microsoft started this calendar year at 211. You want to see something scary? You want to see what a 382 retracement looks like on Microsoft? Talk about 297. You're talking about 300 bucks. That would just be a normal retracement in a bull market move as Microsoft trades from 211 to 350. Yeah, we're back to 330, but these markets sitting right near all time highs, folks. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up live next, folks, at 10 o'clock. Our man Larry Pezzavento. He is live today. He's back in the saddle at 11. Fast market at 12. You heard him. Amazon, Target, Walmart. We got Steve Rhodes at one, Dave White at two, and Tom O'Brien. My dad wraps it up live from three till four. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.